Hello everyone, this is Talkon 3 d with a super quick tutorial on how to use the ragdolls I provided <clears throat> on my freebie link. Uh, so all you gotta do is, after you unzip the files that I gave you, um, I have them here, for example, in my uh, ragdoll folder under props, because they are props, they are props that have physics, basically. So uh, as you can see here, I have a chalk setup. So I'm going to bring it in, and I have a GORF set up. So those are the two that I've included that you guys can get at um, at the Reillusion forum. And um, basically, all you got to do is the only reason you got to do this is because uh, the only way to save the rig so you can bring it into any scene is this way. Otherwise, uh, you would have to have you would have to like build your scene from scratch if you want to use a rig that is uh, already with the ragdolls already linked so um, if you want to bring the ragdoll to your scene this is the only way to do it so right now all, all you have to do is press Q for selection select all the pieces for the ragdoll on this side not the cube and then you right click detach now you can go ahead and just get rid of this cube because you don't need it anymore same thing for this setup it's, it's, it's the exact same setup as this. Uh, they're all attached, all these parts are attached to this cube, which is the only way to be able to save it as a separate file. So, right now, all you gotta do is the same thing press Q, select all the pieces over here, right click on any of those pieces, and detach. And then you go and you can delete that part now. Now, it's very important that you, when you do this linking part, you do it on frame one because afterwards, and I will show you this on part two on the ragdoll tutorial, um, how to link the avatar to the ragdoll, uh, you will notice that I will start selecting all the parts here and removing the animation. However, if you remove the, an if, you, if you did the linking not on frame one and you remove the animation, you destroy the linking. So, uh, Reillusion made it so that at frame one, the linking never gets destroyed when you remove animation so that's one of the reasons why you gotta be at frame one that's very important so right now as you as you will see here first of all let me load um, uh, um, uh, an infinite plane so that the ragdolls have something to fall onto and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just freeze it so I don't select it by mistake and I'm gonna just let him drop see so as you can see they are uh, all the body parts here are linked via physics, but they are not really linked object to object. Because look what I what what happens if I select this upper arm part of it and I decide to rotate it. See, it just moves the upper arm, but it leaves the forearm and the hand behind. So that's why you need to relink uh, the the ragdoll so that you can actually pose this character to match any other pose of from the actual avatar or vice versa you can match the avatar to the ragdoll's position so uh, it, it's, it's the process is very simple all you gotta do is right click link to and and just follow the hierarchy you go from the hand to the forearm to the from the forearm to the upper arm from the upper arm you link it to the torso now you want the head to go to the torso, you link that to the torso, and again you want the hand linked to the upper uh, uh, forearm, from the forearm or or lower arm, uh, from the lower arm to the upper arm, from the upper arm to the torso, and the torso. Select the torso. There we go. We want the torso to be linked to the pelvis. The pelvis is the center point where you move your ragdoll so everything will join into converge into that point, into this piece of geometry. Now let's do the foot. I'm gonna do the foot and I'm gonna go link link to the calf. From the calf we're gonna link to the thigh. From the thigh we're gonna link to the pelvis same thing for the other foot real quick I'm right clicking by the way to, to get this menu so it's very simple I'm gonna click 
and link to the thigh, from the thigh, link to the pelvis. All right, so now, here's the tricky part. Even though this pyramids here, which uh, I call them reach targets or stabilizers, um, they look like they're going to the hand, they actually need to be attached to the forearm, so or the lower arm. So I'm gonna go ahead and link to this part right here. And the same thing with this this uh, stabilizer. We're gonna link to this part over here. We're gonna do the same thing for the feet. Uh, we're gonna link this pyramid not to the foot, but to the calf. And I'm gonna do this to the other one. Link to there. All right. Now this middle part is for the pelvis. And now uh, we need to select the uh, torso one because right now it's kind of hard to see over here. So it's right in there. And just right click on it, link to the torso. All right. So right now, if I press my space bar here, you will notice all the pieces are together for this avatar, but not this one, okay? Because we haven't linked that part, those guys yet. So you can do that, you can do the exact same thing for this one. This one's for Chuck, this one's for Gorf. Uh, I did this one because it has less pieces. This one has an extra piece in the, in the middle part of the uh, spine because uh, uh, Chuck's torso is actually longer. So I had to add an, an extra little part over here. But for Gorf, because he's, his body is so squished, uh, you don't have to do that. So uh, all you got to do now is just, um, if you want to link them, you can link them right now. Uh, but I will show you that how to do it on, on, on part two on how to attach the avatar to the ragdoll uh, the proper way. Um, someone else decided to do a t quick tutorial on how to attach it but he didn't quite understood the whole concept of the rig and uh, the way to do it is to actually attach them to the stabilizers because this stabilizers give you an extra motion layer that you wouldn't have otherwise if you try to attach straight to the ragdoll as opposed to the stabilizers and I will show you that on the second part of the tutorial but uh, basically that's how you do it so once you have it in your scene your set you can use it as many times you know you can play the simulation go back uh, you can you can go ahead and pose the guy because you have him linked now you can go ahead and pose the guy any way you want him you wanna do that just like any ava any any avatar, so that was the reason why you I wanted you to relink it after you load it in, because uh, this gives you the, the capability to match the last pose of the avatar's motion to the ragdoll or, or, for the ragdoll, or you can use the last pose of the ragdoll and then a, a, af, afterwards uh, match the avatar to it. So you so you can go from motion to ragdoll simulation to motion kind of thing. And I will show you this on on the second part of the uh, ragdoll tutorial. For now, this is the way you set up the ragdoll and um, just enjoy it, have fun. Uh, I want to show you before we do that that you can absolutely uh, at this point you can attach uh, the, ra the, the the avatar if you want to. I'm gonna just bring in Gorf in here. There we go. And I'm gonna let's see. Do I have a uh, snap the grid? Not yet. All right. Let's try that again. All right. Oh, I went too far. Sorry. Let's bring Gorf again in here. And I'm gonna select snap the grid on. <laughs> Let's do it again. Okay, here we go. Snap the grid. Yeah, we go. That's. I won't snap the grid because I want him to land exactly on uh, in here under under the ragdoll. And uh, while you don't really have to do it actually, because <laughs> what happens is you can, once you right click and um, start attaching the parts. Um, if you go to motion layer edit, go to the reach menu, and then select this, and then you go like that, and select go here. See, snaps right there to that position. Uh, but just to be, just to do it the clean way here, I always like to go ahead and just uh, have them have the avatar just be on top of it, and um, 
and do the same thing just right click link to not link sorry motion menu edit motion layer and I'm just gonna go ahead and show you real quick that this is pretty much a very easy setup now because you have the stabilizer and they stick out it's very easy to select them now and one thing you have to do is both do the reach and rotation on that's very important if you don't do that then you're gonna lose some of the flexibility that this rig will give you can give you and this is one of the reasons why I was mentioning um, that it is not wise to try to link it straight to the actual ragdoll rig as opposed to the stabilizers okay here we go like that real quick select here link it to that make sure that you got reach and rotation on very good do the same thing for this little guy select proper stabilizer and uh, do a reach and rotation as as you can see I already set up uh, the stabilizers to have the proper rotations for the reach so that the the hands are not twisted and so and, and so on uh, I'm gonna select this guy this one is gonna be harder to select so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select it straight from the uh, scene manager and just select the torso part and again I'm gonna give it the uh, reach and rotation on there okay so right now you got your full rig attached um, you can play like with this right now uh, hell I uh, actually what one thing I wanted to do also before I did that is select uh, Gorf and um, make sure the foot contact is on so that when you do the animation and let him drop there we go and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, turn press control D I already made the uh, ragdoll uh, set as dummy so you can uh, uh, remove the um, the ragdoll from from the display so it doesn't get too confusing and you can actually grab the pieces here so notice how he can what happens when you this is what would happen if you attach straight on the ragdoll straight on uh, onto the uh, the avatar onto the ragdoll he would give you this weird curvy uh, feel to it so however then you wouldn't be able to edit uh, this motion afterwards and uh, one thing that uh, by doing it by using the stabilizers is that you can actually I'm gonna press F3 here real quick and um, I'm gonna use the stabilizers here to let's see I'm gonna scrub I'm gonna zoom out a little bit here so there we go so he falls down and he kinda of bends a little too harsh in here like that so let's say I want the torso I don't want the head to crash into into the floor right so what I would do here is because I have my stabilizers on I can what I could do is at this point before he reaches the the floor about there I'm gonna go ahead and select my torso reach and I'm gonna go ahead and for transform I'm gonna set a key right there and then as I scrub through you notice that it's going into the fl in the head is going into it but let's see it goes into it about there so now because I have my torso here available um, oh, one thing we gotta do before we do anything else here is select I'm gonna control D need to make sure that A select all these guys over here which don't have physics properties but I don't want them to select to select them I don't want to select them so now I'm gonna select oh, make sure I don't select Gorf either so I'm gonna freeze him and actually I'm gonna turn them off so it doesn't get confusing here I'm gonna select all these parts right here and in physics I will go ahead and uh, deactivate the physics for this guy so so now all we're doing is, uh, is tweaking a recorded version of the physics that went on
So notice here that the head, for example, um, uh, doesn't go through the ground. But if you turn on Gorf on, if you turn Gorf on, then he he does. So uh, I will show you how to fix that. Uh, this is where the look at function comes in, and uh, uh, I will show you how to fix that in uh, part two of the tutorial. I'm already sh going through a lot of things I wanted to show you in, on part two of the tutorial, but uh, I I just don't like to leave things incomplete. So I wanted to show you that it is the reason why you want the stabilizer. So as you can see, we set a keyframe there, and this is the maximum point right there. So what I'm going to do here is select my torso. I'm going to make it over there so it's selectable again. And now I'm going to go ahead and do two things. A, I can rotate this. Oh, let's turn off this part. So as I rotate, see how it arches the head? There you go, like that. And now I can go ahead and move this. Oops, and do. Uh, not too much, because <laughs> you might uh, you might pop it. So there we go, like so. So by doing this and adding a keyframe there, uh, not not for Gorf, sorry. Let's make sure that we add a keyframe. All right, the keyframe is set there. So now uh, when he falls down he doesn't go. So here I did it real quick. So I mean you can do it, you know, you can go in here and you know and tweak it much better, you know, to your heart's content here. Um make sure that the head is not floating. But you know, that's 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 basically it. That's uh that's the reason why you wanna have this rig set up this way so that you can use the stabilizers as a motion layer capability to your ragdoll so you can tweak it so that if there is any anomalies any bad twisting when the physics happen you can fix it afterwards all right so i go uh, i'll go into a more detail on the second part of the ragdoll tutorial but for now this is how you set it up and how you rig it together okay hope you enjoy it and uh see you uh, in at the forums